Hi there, it's Lee here for iMindBlocks. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a great day. I certainly am and I'm looking forward to sharing this video with you guys. So in this one, we're gonna be looking at the AMD Polaris series of graphics cards. So that's the RX 400 series. Um, and we're gonna be taking a look at exactly how they perform specifically with Ethereum mining. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go through uh, each card at a time, the 460, the 470, and the 480. And we're just gonna have a look and compare how they perform mining Ethereum, what the performance is like, what the, the efficiency is like, and also what the overall cost is. Um, perhaps you, know, you can use this information to work out your best options in terms of which card you're gonna to choose to buy, or the overall efficiency, how long you're gonna get a return on, things like that. So I'm gonna take you through it, um, sort of um, card by card. Um, I've got a couple of slides set up for you. Okay, so let's take a look at our first graphics card. So it's the Sapphire Nitro RX 460, and this is the four gigabyte version. I chose this card because it seemed to offer the best performance, price, and um, overall characteristics that were good for Ethereum mining. There's a few other variations that are available, but I chose this one um, because I think it's the kind of the best um, all-rounder. So this one comes in at £130. Um, it's quite easily uh, available. There's not too much um, issues getting getting hold of this card. The core clock comes in at 11.75 uh, with a boost overclock of uh, 12.50. Uh, memory clock comes in at 17.50 and using DDR5 memory, that gives you an effective memory clock of 7,000 megahertz. It has 863 stream processors and it uses a tiny amount of power using only 75 watts. Uh, also to mention as well it has a six pin PCI Express power connector. Um, it's not really needed, you could really do that just from the actual uh, motherboard itself um, but it has that extra connector on there as well just to give it a little bit of extra power which might come in handy if you are overclocking the card. So let's take a look at the performance and efficiency of this card when it comes to Ethereum mining. So I've done quite a bit of research um, online for this particular card and the base kind of level uh, hash speed that you can get when mining Ethereum is around 10 mega hashes. So if you buy this card you might find you get a little bit less or a little bit more depending on the exact version that you go for in terms of a uh, brand. Um, but the ballpark figure uh, is 10 mega hashes so that's really quite good for, for a budget entry level graphics card of this nature. Uh, the price comes in, as we've already said, uh, 130 pounds, and it uses 75 watts of uh, electricity. In terms of the actual efficiency, what you're getting is 13 pounds, it's costing you per mega hash of performance. So for every single mega hash you're using or you get in speed, it's gonna cost you a capital cost of, of 13 pounds. Next, we move the actual uh, efficiency of the card or power usage. You're using 7.5 watts for every mega hash of uh, performance. So in summary, this is a good, compact and efficient graphics card for mining Ethereum. If you're looking to get started with it or maybe you're just sort of uh, dipping your toes into mining Ethereum or other cryptocurrencies, this card will probably be quite a good one uh, for you and um, it's easily available it's you know cheap considering the performance that it uh, gives you and it's a really good um, starter card so overall this is a really good card for those that just want to dip their toes in and um, don't want to commit too much into ethereum mining our next card is the sapphire nitro rx 470 and this is the eight gigabyte version I chose the 8GB version primarily because it's going to give you the best performance of the 470 series uh, specifically for Ethereum mining. You can also get a 4GB version but it's not going to give you quite as good performance as this particular card. So obviously there's other branded versions um, as well as um, and they're going to give you the same performance but I, I would stress that the 8GB memory cards are the ones that you definitely want to be going for. So the card comes in at £230, um, £100 more than the previous model, the 460. Core clock comes in at 1121 megahertz, 
and the boost clock is 1260 megahertz. Memory clock comes in at 2000 megahertz and that gives you an effective memory clock of 8000 megahertz or 8 gigahertz. The card has 2048 stream processors so well over double the previous uh, generation, sorry, the previous uh, graphics card, the uh, 460 model. And it uses um, significantly more powerful uh, power than the 460 as well, using 150 watts. When it comes to power and efficiency, the RX 470, the eight gigabyte version, uh, really does provide some quite stunning results. Um, this is a card that a lot of people are gonna be buying specifically for uh, Ethereum mining. Um, it's a really good all-rounder. So just having a look at the actual figures, it mines Ethereum practically out of the box at 25 mega hashes per second. So you're getting really good performance. It's a really uh, solid performer. Uh, as I said in the previous slide, it only costs um, 230 pounds and you're using um, around 150 watts of power. When it comes to the actual uh, numbers for the efficiency, you're looking at nine pounds and 20 pence per mega hash of performance. And the also the efficiency of the card, the power efficiency is just using six watts per mega hash. So you're getting some really quite incredible performance figures there on this generation of card or this specific model of card when compared with not only the other cards in the actual uh, Polaris series, the 400 series, itself but also on you know cards of kind of all generations so if you compare this card to a uh, amd 380 for example this card is basically kills it it absolutely crushes it in terms of the performance and the efficiency it's a really good card all around and particularly for ethereum mining um, it's hard to beat this one but there is one other we need to take a look at so let's get on to that one now Okay, so we're now looking at one of the top cards in the RX 400 series. So the one I've picked out is the XFX Black Edition and it's the RX 480 8GB. I chose this one uh, because, to be honest, I didn't really want another Sapphire card, although the other Sapphire Nitro compared to, uh, to this card uh, very, very well indeed. Um, in the end, it just kind of, uh, this XFX version just eked out a slight lead in terms of performance and the uh, overall cost. So I chose the XFX Black Edition. It's a really solid uh, gaming graphics card and also super for mining Ethereum. So let's just take a, a little look at the actual uh, details of this card before moving on to the performance and the efficiency of the card. So the core clock is 1120 and the boost clock is quite quite an increase, goes up to 13 and 28. So that's your standard overclock out of the box. Memory clock is the same as the 470 series. You've got 2000 megahertz memory clock that gives you an effective uh, speed of 8000 megahertz. Just the same as the 470 series, the eight gigabyte version. With the stream processors, we're slightly up over the 470. With the RX 480 series, we have 2,304 stream processors. So that's going to help a little bit with uh, mining all cryptocurrencies in general. The downside is that this particular card does use quite a bit more power than a 470 series and obviously um, extremely more than the 460 there. It uses 225 watts uh, compared with the 150 watts of the 470 series. So let's take a look at exactly how that translates into the performance and the efficiency of the card. Okay, so this card, you should expect to get a out of the box performance without really too much difficulty. You should be expecting a baseline hash rate of around 25 mega hashes per second. You should get that without too much bother um, at all. Lots of people are getting those kind of performances with um, no real bother. So I just wanted to kind of um, go over some extra parts of it as well. Recently there has been released and it's up to you whether you would actually go through the bother of doing this or not. Um, if you're buying this car specifically for Ethereum mining, you probably will want to do this because you're gonna get the best performance. Um, but recently the, there was a BIOS modification that you can do. So what you can do is you can flash the card 
with a non-standard or non-official uh, BIOS. And what that's gonna do is change the characteristics of the actual graphics card, and it's gonna give you much higher hashing performance whilst also lowering the actual power usage of the card itself. So that's something that's recently been released and people are getting excellent results of it. Um, I've seen um, people online talking that they're getting hash rates of well over 30 mega hashes per second. So if you're buying this card for a Fury mining, that BIOS mod um, for the card is, is definitely gonna work wonders for you. So on that basis, so I've got a couple of different results. So we've got the base figure, which is at 25 mega hashes. So on that basis, at 25 mega hashes, you're basically going to be paying £9.60 per hash of performance. And the power usage is going to be 9 watts of power per hash of performance. If you do the BIOS mod, you're going to be getting a quite a significant increase in terms of performance. So on that basis, if you're hashing at 30 mega hashes, that means that your performance is only going to cost you eight pounds per mega hash performance. So it's really cost effective if you're buying this card for Ethereum mining. And the actual energy use goes down to 7.5 watts per mega hash performance. So that is really quite excellent characteristics. Even if you just take the actual out of box standard uh, performance levels, you're gonna be getting really good results uh, with this card. Um, but like I said, using those uh, that BIOS mod, which you know some people will be reluctant to do because it's not the easiest process in the world. And um, if you get it wrong, um, you'll basically have a dead graphics card. So some people might be reluctant to do that. But if you do do that, if you take the gamble and it works as expected and as it should, you're gonna be getting huge payoffs in terms of performance. Okay guys, so just to sum up this video, we've taken a look at the RX 460, the 470, and the 480. I've showed you which and how each one performs, um, how much power they use, how much they cost, and hopefully this information has been useful for you. Perhaps you're making a decision uh, whether which one to buy, how much they cost, and all that kind of uh, good stuff. If you have any questions or comments, um, as always, you can leave those in the comments area below and I will uh, endeavor to get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. Um, I hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, I've enjoyed making it and uh, I've enjoyed sharing this uh, information with you. So thanks again for watching. Uh, regarding these products as well, um, if you need links to any of the products, um, I'll put those in the link description as well. So you can take a look at those on Amazon and you know make your decisions based on that information. So thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.